Hey, I'm New Zealand Mike, this is my doggy Speed Bump, and you are watching the Kane interviews on Cat Television, Fayetteville, Arkansas. You're watching the Kane Interviews. I'm Shannon Kane, and today we're going to be talking with New Zealand Mike, a professional tattoo artist. We'll learn more about the tattoo industry, what to look for when considering getting a tattoo, and much more. And we'll also be hanging out with Speed Bump, who is not a tattoo artist, but doubtless has seen plenty of tattoo work in his time. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Why, thank you. Good to be here. All right. Now, uh, Mike, how long have you been a professional tattoo artist? Well, I've been tattooing about oh, almost 20 years now, I guess. But um, for a lot of that time, I wasn't full time in a shop. Um, I was married at the time, and tattooing's kind of a demanding occupation, you know. With tattooing, you give up your social life, your weekends, your nights. And uh, I didn't want it to put my marriage under strain at the time. Uh, but now I'm divorced, so I'm tattooing full time and loving it. <laughs> okay. Well, what got you into the field? Golly, I just drifted into it by accident. I was a construction worker. My lower back gave me trouble. I had a friend in the same boat. Um, we started out, uh, he, he was learning permanent makeup at the time, so we both started out tattooing on eyelids and that extremely... <laughs> it was very interesting. And um, then we drifted into the more traditional aspects of tattooing. I found out that I had a little bit of a talent for it and uh, I just kept uh, working at it. Eventually, um, you know, a lot of people will start out working on themselves or friends. In fact, at one time, me and my partner uh, were working on a guy who was a paraplegic. <laughs> we figured if we messed him up, he wouldn't be able to chase us down. But it was funny. We uh, put an eagle on him and uh, my friend lost the pattern and tried to freehand the neck, so it wound up with a, like a fat-headed eagle. Uh, over time, we both eventually bought apprenticeships to learn what we were doing properly, and I, I hunted this guy down and says, dude, <laughs> let me fix that tattoo up for you. Wow. And it looked fine. Great, okay. Well, let's look at the history of tattooing. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Man, tattooing's been around forever. I mean, uh, there's that ice man that they dug out of the ice in, in Europe and what was that 5,000 years old or 5,000 before BC and I believe he had tattoo marks on him but people have been marking themselves um, for tribal or just distinguishing or just because for a long time um, the style that really brought tattooing in, into attention was uh, the native people of my home country New Zealand the Maori who had the intricate face cut more like carvings than tattooing, um, just designated their lives, their tribe beliefs, da 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 da. And um, it became mainstream from there. It has, it goes through cycles like everything else. Uh, in the 20s, there was a, an upsurge in tattooing in the 40s, and now, of course, it's riding a tremendous wave. Um, the future is, is pretty stellar for tattooing as long as it's done responsibly. Right. Okay, well, when looking for a tattoo artist, what factors should a customer consider? Well, you always want to check out uh, the person who you're considering work on. You check out their portfolio, see what type of work they do. 
Um, and going along with that, you want to find somebody that you're comfortable with. You know, you don't, you don't want to have like a personality conflict in the chair or somebody who has an aggressive streak or somebody who thinks that they're perhaps better than everybody else. Um, just get a feel for the person, check out their work. Uh, make sure, of course, that uh, cleanliness and hygiene standards are, are up to par, which in Arkansas is pretty automatic. It's a very heavy regulated state. And um, figure out what you want. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, well, how does a customer know uh, if a shop has good hygiene practices? What should they look for there? Well, as I said, Arkansas is a very heavily regulated state health-wise. Um, it doesn't matter if you're the greatest tattoo artist in the world. You move to Arkansas and you want to work in Ar Arkansas, you have to go through uh, an apprenticeship. You have to do your bloodborne pathogen tests um, and all that. Uh, the shops in the state are inspected regularly by the health department who will sit down and go through everything with a fine tooth comb. Um, but also just watch the people that you're working on, uh, be aware of cross-contamination, because even with very stringent rules, if I go to grab a bottle with a glove I've been working on somebody with and touch that, then if I touch that again, that's possible cross-contamination. Um, so just be aware of, of certain things like that. And uh, of course, every shop has to have an autoclave steriliser, which is the only, only safe way you can uh, think. But just look for clean, sanitary environment and, and um, responsible people. Okay. Um, what are the dangers of drinking alcohol before getting tattooed? You might get beat up by your tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, alcohol thins the blood. Um, and when you're working on somebody, it tends to make them bleed more, which can bleed the color out, which means you're going to be in for a touch-up. Also, people, if they've been drinking, they can fidget. They can get obnoxious. Um, it's just... So it's better to come in completely alcohol and substance-free if you're going to get some tattoo work done. Oh, yeah, substance, too. I've, mm -hmm. uh, me and my partner worked on a couple of girls on speed one night, came mm -hmm. in late. We decided to stay late for them. It had been a lean day. <laughs> they both wanted lower back pieces. We told them it was aggravating. And oh man, what a nightmare. Every oh. time that needle would hit them, they'd jump and scream and it just, wow. yeah, just, just stay straight. All right. Uh, what's the best method of care for a new tattoo? Keep it sanitary and clean um, and lightly moist. There are, there are several different ways of looking after tattoos and um, your artist will go through that with you. Um, a popular method recently has just been antibacterial soap and uh, a good hand lotion. Um, people have used Neosporin, but a triple antibiotic can cause an allergic reaction, so that is discouraged. Um, <laughs> I, there's, there's like 10 different ways. Oh, okay. Um, now you had mentioned the potential for cross-contamination. Um, so infectious diseases can be potentially spread by a tattoo needle. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You have a, a infectious disease, especially bloodborne pathogen, and a needle goes in your skin, then that needle goes to somebody else. That's, yeah, it's, it's a very major concern. But as long as the regulations and practices are followed, um, responsibly, it wouldn't matter if I have AIDS, HIV, Hep A through Z and anything else, and you have it too, there's no danger of contamination or, or passing disease. And that, that's why the health regulations are so strict. Okay. Um, now, uh, is it customary when getting a tattoo to tip the tattoo artist? It's a service industry. And so, yeah, we appreciate tips, um, especially if we've given you a smoking deal. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> and as an aside, when you come in to bargain for a tattoo, we, we know you're not going to tip. So <laughs> the price generally goes up. Um, but yeah, if, you know, if you're happy with the work, you like the artist and that, then, then it's up to your discretion whether to tip or not. It's, it's not a requirement, but as in any service industry, it is appreciated. Um, 
Somebody actually asked me this when I was uh, preparing this interview, so it may sound like an odd question, but can pregnant women get tattoos? That varies from state to state. In Arkansas, there's no regulation about that. In California, um, you don't tattoo pregnant women. Okay. It's, um, I don't believe there's any danger, probably in California with the lawsuits and all that. It's just a, a CYA, cover your butt mm -hmm. type thing. Um, but injection of pigment into the skin, unless if there was to be a major allergic reaction, which is practically unheard of, uh, it, it should not cause any concerns. And again, it's a different state-by-state -state regulation thing. Okay. Now, if a person has a fading or a poorly done tattoo, uh, what, if anything, could be done to make that look better? Take a knife and slice it off, throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's always something that can be done. Always something that can be done. Uh, one of my favorite stories is in my hometown, there was an artist who um, did heroin. Mm -hmm. And he was working on a lady's back one time and nodded out oh. and just dragged that machine all the way down her back. Mm. Major error. Uh, oh. she, she, she went to a competent artist and they fixed it. There's always something that can be done. And, um, and that's pertaining to cover-ups or straightening stuff out. I mean, I've fixed tattoos that were done in 1947 in communist China, so blurred oh. that you couldn't tell what they were. Wow. And uh, after like three weeks of study and the person's memory, oh yeah, it was a dragon, the head was up here, the tail was down there came into focus and, and I made it look good again. Wow. Um, but also, you can have um, them lasered off, which is getting more affordable and uh, safer. In the old days, laser would leave scars that were uglier than the bad tattoo, but now uh, the science is getting pretty down. And uh, I, I've seen half sleeves removed with no trace. Wow. But like I say, it is expensive, although getting more affordable. Okay. Uh, now, of all the tattoo art that you've done, what's your all-time favorite piece? Uh, the pig on Big Marty's belly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about that. <laughs> uh, I was still in California. I actually got the inspiration for the piece in Arkansas, but my buddy Big Marty, excuse me. <clears throat> Big Marty's like a 400-pound biker dude. Big old belly. He told me one day, he said, yeah, I want a big old pig on my belly. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yeah, interesting. And then I left and I was actually coming through Arkansas and I stopped at a Razorback store and there was a couple of designs I looked at that just gelled in my head. And so I went back and we put a giant, um, like angry pig head on his belly. <laughs> <laughs> I used the belly button for a mouthpiece. It's, it's funny, it'll swallow two inches of a beer bottle and I've seen women tear off their garments and stick various pieces of their anatomy in, into his belly button. Uh, it's a totally satisfying piece for me. Oh, um, that. When it's on stage and he lifts that shirt up and the crowd just starts yelling and hollering and cheering and laughing and that, it just sends a tingle down your spine, you know? Wow. <laughs> well, uh, you have your gun here. Could you show us well, that? Well, actually, they're machines, the Shannon. Machine. Guns okay. kill people, tattoo. Right. Machines make them more beautiful okay. in the right hand. All right. Um, basically, the machines have run off a standard design since the 1920s. Um, a pair of reciprocating coils, they create a current, pull the armature bar down, break the current, and that will throw a needle in and out. Um, in this machine, there goes a tube, which you hang on to, and a needle inside that tube. And the needle can be of many different configurations depending on what type uh, of art you're doing. Um, the, a, a couple of other versions, there's like a rotary version, which has never become popular. And now they have pneumatic machines, which uh, I just ran across very recently, and which work really well. Um, now, what are uh, the major styles of tattoo art, and which one do you personally prefer doing? I don't like to get locked into any style, mm -hmm. unless if it's like completely crazy, nutty, funny stuff, you know. <laughs> 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 like big pigs on people's bellies. Um, There's probably not a lot of call for that. <laughs> it's kind of a specialized thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, well, you have your black and grey, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, there's just such smoke and work in the tattoo art now. Just, just go and pick, and pick up a, a late model magazine if, mm -hmm. if you haven't seen one in a while, and you'll just be blown away by, by the work people are doing. But there's black and grey, of course, um, colour, abstract, the new wave, you know, funky, bright colours, uh, kind of abstract stuff. Um, portraiture is, yeah, I don't know if it's a separate field. Uh, it is somewhat of a specialty. I, I like doing portraits. Um, black and grey colour. Mm -hmm. uh, tribal, of course, the, yeah. the dark... Uh, Intricate designs or simple designs are very popular, and yeah, on and on. Yeah, yeah. And, and old school. Um, old school, yeah, like the yeah. skulls sure, and crossbones. Yeah, and yeah th uh, I've seen a lot of that coming back, things from uh, anywhere from the 20s to the 40s. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. Vin well, vintage tattooing. Yeah, I, I have a piece from Sailor Jerry on my leg, and ah. he goes way, way back, just traditional stuff. Uh, which, which is still popular and, and in demand. A lot of times, um, people don't even know what they want when they come in the shop. You know, like me, I have trouble making decisions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it, but I also started late <coughs> in the field, you know, age-wise. Um, but yeah, a lot of people will come in the shop and just like, well, I want that, I want that. Uh, oh, okay, I'll have that, you know. Um, now, when you have customers coming in, do a lot of them tend to just go with the flash, or do you have more people wanting custom work uh, when they when they come in? In other words, do they just want something that's a design off the wall? A lot of people just want a design off the wall, yeah. and pretty much any artist will alter that design slightly so that it's there. They have their slant on it too, and so you know you you have a little bit of individuality. And of course, custom work is, is bigger too. Um, but you just can't walk into a shop and say, you know, I want a custom dragon slaying a knight or something. You, in that case, generally, you, you need to leave a holding deposit to show good faith that you're interested. The artist will draw the um, piece up for you mm -hmm. and then apply it when you're ready. All right. uh, now, if someone were interested in becoming a tattoo artist, uh, how would he or she begin in the field? Well, in Arkansas, you need to do an apprenticeship. So you need to work under a licensed artist that's been licensed in the state of Arkansas for three years. And now, um, the shop has to be state approved, which is a major hassle for anybody going through that. Uh, I believe now there's 11 shops in the state of Arkansas that are health department approved for, for training. Uh, there's one here in northwest Arkansas. I was working at the shop at the time, and boy, oh boy, what a hassle and hoops those people had to go through to get that license. Um, but they got it now, and so their business is secure. And um, Also, it costs money. You, you're, education's expensive, no matter where you are. And so an, an apprenticeship can run you, depending on your level of experience. I mean, if you, if you have experience like I when I came to Arkansas, I got in for slightly less, um, but I expect to pay like $10,000 for an apprenticeship. Wow. Wow. Uh, you, you get in a good location though, and if you're responsible, and don't be like, woohoo, I got all this money, oh man, there's all that dope over there, <laughs> you're down. <laughs> uh, you, you can make that money back. Um, but on that aside, there can be a self-destruct yeah. uh, syndrome with some younger artists. Okay. Well, let's talk about Speed Bump. How did he come into your life? Uh, I was taking my trash out one night. My trash cans were on the road and he was sniffing around my trash cans on the road. And uh, I'm like, dude, you're not even a Speed Bump. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> I said, get your butt over here. And I reached down, he came trotting over. I reached down, he jumped up in my hands and he was all wet and like pissy. Uh -huh. Just uh, matted, disheveled. Um, I took him in, I told my wife at the time, hey, look at this little speed bump I just found. <laughs> and um, we tried to find his owners and couldn't find anybody looking for him. And so we kept him. And then over the course of time, I found a couple of places where he had stayed, but 
we just told them, you know, you guys should have looked for your dog. Mm -hmm. And you know, we just kept them and they had, they really didn't have a choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> and now he travels with you around the country, right? Oh yeah, a little biker dog. He, he, he likes to ride on anything, but uh, my preferred method of transportation is my Harley Davidson motorcycle. So uh, I fabricated a basket on the tank for him where he can duck down out the wind, got a little sunshade. He sits up there and uh, <coughs> we've just done, heck, over the last month, we've done like 9,000 miles wow. down to Florida, up the East Coast, down the Blue Ridge, came back here, took off to Utah, Colorado. Now I've got to get back to work. Uh -huh. I'm done spending money. <laughs> oh, well, uh, now he's a bit of a TV star, right? He's been on other programs. and I would have. I'd like to make him a TV star. <laughs> uh, I worked hard at that for a long time when I was doing construction, looking desperately for something else to do. I got him on an Animal Planet show. We popped up on Access Hollywood. Um, the TV Critics Association panel took us down to Hollywood and uh, we were down there with all the big stars. Um, I have pretty much all the stuff for him to get his own little TV show, but now I'm tattooing and life is good <laughs> and I just have kind of lost the impetus a little bit. But also entertainment's tricky where people will stroke you and there's many pitfalls. Um, well now you originally come from New Zealand. How do you like living in Arkansas? Oh, I love Arkansas. If I didn't like it I wouldn't be here. Right. Yeah. But I was in Southern California for a long, long time, 20 odd years. Uh, so this is a refreshing change. Okay. You know, less people, um, trees, <laughs> and, and a bit more laid back pace of life. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, like culturally maybe, what difference do you notice between, say, New Zealand and Arkansas? Is it oh, girl, it's been 82 since I was last in New Zealand. So, so it's that been place a while. Has changed, yeah. Oh, okay. They tell me it's pretty back there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you're a U.S. citizen? Yeah. Right? Okay. All right. Well, now, um, we're about to wrap up the show, but uh, what advice would you give to somebody out there who's thinking of getting his or her first tattoo? Uh, give it a little thought. Um, pick an area on your body that's not going to be too aggravating. Um, a lot of girls these days are getting, well, they're designated as like a tramp stamp yeah. on the lower back, which is a, an aggravating part of your anatomy to get worked on. Tattoos don't really hurt, but they can be very aggravating. Well, what are some of the easier spots of the body? Ah, your upper arms, uh, legs, etc., right. etc. Et How about uh, the ankle? Ankle's a little lively. Okay. Uh, anytime you get close to the bone and that, your nerve endings start getting close to the surface and, and it'll pick up the intensity a little bit. Uh, but the funny thing is, you might be like, ooch, ooch, ouch, 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 ouch. And then uh, when you're done, you're like, oh, what do I want next? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so do you find that it gets a little addictive sometimes? Uh, oh man, yeah, people that can be like totally addicted to tattoos. Yeah. All right, well, thanks to both of you for being on the show. And, uh, and I'm going to tell them that you've been watching the Kane interviews on Cat TV. I'm Shannon Kane, and you'll want to stick around for more intriguing program, uh, more intriguing programming right here. Community Access Television, Fayetteville, Arkansas. See you next time.